Hello YouTube, I am Lul Stamp and this is a Minecraft video about computers. There we go. You did! Gotcha. That took a lot of tries. Anyway, guys, I am making a Minecraft video and it really is about computer chips, in particular about CPUs. I recently upgraded my CPU from an Intel i5-4460, which is a 3.2 gigahertz chip, and I went to a Intel i7-4790K, which I have not yet overclocked, which is a 4.0 gigahertz chip, which really runs around 4.4 with the boost clock on. Anyway, I made this change because I like to tinker with computers and didn't have to change motherboards and etc. But um, I have been led to believe uh, by YouTubers and Twitch streamers, etc., that Minecraft is extremely CPU dependent and it doesn't really work on your graphics card. So you want a good CPU and you want it to be fast and you want it to have just a few cores. It doesn't need a whole bunch. So um, I made that change and I, I want to see exactly what you can see and what you can perceive about the increase to performance and whether or not it even exists. So I will be using CPU-Z, I will be using real temps, and I will be using the regular old resource manager from Windows 10 to kind of record and discuss and notice some stuff about Minecraft that I couldn't otherwise notice with my own eyes. And, you know, you want to quantify things if you're going to do benchmarking. And by no means am I a professional, guys. All right, let's set this to play. And then we'll talk about um, the tools that are going to be used to help me in this video. I'm using the resource monitor from Windows 10, which is going to show us all of the CPU usage um, pretty much simultaneously, I suppose. And then we're going to be looking at the 4790K. This is where the chip name will be, depending on the video. There will be the 4460 or the 4790K. Um, the core clock will be here. The voltage will be here. The load on the CPU represented as an image on the resource monitor will be represented numerically here, along with temperatures, which we're going to ignore because I have now water cooled my computer with the intent to overclock in the near future. So ignore temperatures, they're not that important right now. Mostly just focus on the load. And while this is loading, I will also mention that one of the main tests that I ran was the actual load time. The screen that we're going through right now, how long it took to get into a game and actually be ready to play. So no more drag, no more delay from the time I hit start to the time the game is playable. Um, I measured that for three different mod packs and vanilla. So we'll talk, we'll talk about that at the end. Anyhow, um, let's get into some gameplay. We're gonna start with the 4460 gameplay. And in the upper left hand corner of each of the videos will be the frames per second. The settings are unlimited frames per second and it's not V-sync. So it's just maxed out as much frames per second as it can have and um, yeah let's see let's let's see what we got all right this is sky factory and if you watch the game is calmed down and for the next 30 seconds or so um, you'll see that the the load on the CPU sticks pretty steady between 30 and 50 the frames between 30 and 140, that's pretty much the top and the bottom. Um, this is Crash Landing. Um, I lost this game It's somehow. Um, but the frames here, it's an older version. It's Minecraft 1.6.10, I believe, or 1.6.4. I think it's 1.64. But the frames here are a little bit faster, about 43 to 70, top to bottom. And I'm sorry, that's the load. Uh, load is a little bit higher, and the frames were quite a bit higher at 250 to 500. And this is regrowth off of the curse launcher. The load here ranged pretty well, about the same, about 35 to 47. And the frames were from 90 to 146. 
low to high. Not significant, diff not significantly different, the three. All right, now we have the new chip installed. Um, we're back in Sky Factory, same world. And the load, if you'll notice, um, it never gets really above 25%. It drops as low as 18 at one point. And the frames per second, the lowest was 105, the highest was 312 for this section of gameplay. It's not in creative, by the way. I have the armor that allows me to fly. There's a VCO. This is crash landing and the load um, on my PC during crash landing gameplay was almost identical. It was 18 to 27 percent load, but the frame rate 381 was the low and uh, 890 was the high for frames per second. This is on a brand new game because I lost my old game, like I mentioned. Uh, I, I just couldn't I couldn't salvage it, unfortunately. And here we're back in my regrowth world. A uh, little bit more material in the environment. And I can't really explain this one. The load, again, was between 19 and 28% on the CPU. But the frames really didn't. They got actually a little bit lower for the ultimate low at 61. And the high at 190 is a little bit higher. But there's a lot more material in the environment. There's a lot. All this stuff was not present during the first video with the 4460. This chart shows the load time in seconds, as the title states, for the different mod packs that I tested, or vanilla, of course. Regrowth, I don't know, it's more than 100 mod pack, or, uh, mods in the mod pack. Sky Factory also is over 100. Crash Landing is at 101, and vanilla obviously has none. But as you can see, there's a pretty drastic increase um, in load speed when going from the 4460 to the 4790K. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for the video. Let's talk real quick about conclusions because I have a few. Um, if you will notice, there was some pretty good increase in frames per second in most of the mod packs. I didn't actually measure the differences between the two chips um, going between mod packs because to me it's extremely not important Minecraft, I use VSync on normally and lock it to the refresh rate of my monitor, so at 120 or 60, depending. And it's it doesn't really benefit from having extremely high frames per second. Um, there's a bottom limit, but you know anything more than 30 is really pretty good for Minecraft. And everything above, and if you just let it go, you know anything above 120 is a waste of power, really, and energy. So I really don't consider an increase in frames per second to be a viable option for a viable increase for Minecraft. The increase in load time I do consider to be viable and certainly noticeable, especially if you're loading multiple times in a day. So in short, guys, I don't really believe terribly much in the advancement or the improvement scene from the 4460 to the 4790K. In fact, I'm going to give that chip to a friend of mine and I'm going to be able to say quite confidently that that chip is more than adequate for modded Minecraft. In fact, it's a little bit of overkill because despite the fact that it was at 40 or 50% load during gameplay, the chip was not responsible for any of the stuttering in Minecraft. That comes from Java or something, or RAM or something unrelated to the CPU. So he can confidently play this game um, which is definitely my favorite game of all time with that chip. So it's cheaper. 3.2 gigahertz is plenty. That is my conclusion. If you have a different opinion, I would love to hear it. Um, if you know how to make Minecraft perform better, I would also love to hear that. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks for watching the video. I really do appreciate it. Um, I've been getting a lot of views lately, and it's it's really nice to know that people are enjoying the videos. So again, thank you for watching and have a really good time, man. Take care.